I saw the film at the <coughs> time, and I was also down in Atlanta during the publicity party that Time Life had. I mean, the 20th Century Fox gave for the press. Most of them came from the South and from uh, the Midwest. And most of them were white liberals um, who recognized the stereotyping in the film, but identified with Paul Newman and believed that's what our lives are like. Who talked to me afterwards and said, but that's, that's what it is. Um, that, that has a, you know, I, I grew up in the South Bronx. I consider that my parents helped build our community and they produced me and I have a commitment to continue that. And I think everyone else here is coming from the same place. One thing that I think is important, um, we should utilize a variety of approaches. We shouldn't lock in to only one approach. And this is a good, I mean, we're coming all from all of us from different places. Um, we're not gonna reach agreement on only one way to voice our anger about this film. I don't think that we could expect that our community isn't, isn't there, that we have one way of voicing our disagreement with something. We have a lot of ways to do it. Um, i just like you know raise some, some historical things. Um, you saw the film today. A lot of you said that the film was choppy, that there were things, you know, one scene jumped to another scene. That's because we forced them to cut out parts of the movie. Where Paul Newman delivers that the girl's baby in that scene there, aside from it being, you know, the white savior running in at the last minute, her family was not with her, standing by her. Aside from that, the original, if you go back to the first six versions of the screenplay, the original versions, and that were filmed and later cut out, show Paul Newman entering the apartment, it's a railroad apartment, walking down the hallway, and off the, off the hallway is a living room full of Puerto Rican men and women, adults, sitting there drinking beer while the girl is screaming in the background. They cut that scene out because of the protest, because we picked it up right away and we hit them on it. And we did it in a variety of methods. We appealed to people who we did not expect to come out in the street to take a statement publicly against the film, and many people did. El Diario called for a boycott of the film. Congressman Garcia called for a boycott of the film <coughs> and the press release. Um, Helena Valentin called for a boycott. The General Welfare Council of the City Council that you were there and re you read a statement and Sister Thomas sent a statement passed unanimously a call for a boycott against the movie that people shouldn't see it. Why shouldn't they see it? Because each, each time we spend a dollar, it encourages filmmakers to make similar films. We've been dealing with this for a while, so we've been you know, talking to filmmakers and theater owners and stuff. There are more films like this waiting to see what kind of money is going to be made. The same thing happened to the Chicano community in the Southwest. They made Walking Tall or Walking Proud, and then they made another one, Boulevard Nights. Similar depiction of the Chicano youth and the cult, you know, kind of distorting the culture of the people. There's more of those gang movies being made now because the first two made money. So one of the things we need to do is not allow them to make money because each dollar they make encourages the next filmmaker to make another one and then to put it on television, and some of you have already seen Hill Street Blues, which is based on the concept of Fort Apache. The Newsday newspaper in, in Long Island said it was taken from the Fort Apache theme of an urban police force patrolling a savage community, and that's, you know, that's where it is. So we did force some changes already using a variety of methods. Some of you here wrote the statements that we then use in literature tables that we set up in the parks, that we then use when we talk with the press. But we also did something else, is that we physically took to the streets. I don't think that that period of time has, has passed. I mean, I understand what people are saying. I think if we haven't done it enough, then we should start doing it. That this is an issue that is broad enough to unite people within our community, where we have differences on a lot of other things. And I can speak for myself and my family, that this is probably the first time that we have agreed 100% on something. And for, you know, for me personally, that's an indication of the kind of issue that this is. It's a real deep insult. It goes real deep for us. Um, they have a $20 million budget for this. From what we understand, at least $6 million is, at, is allocated for advertising. At least a, you know, close to a third of the budget. And if they're not doing well, they're going <coughs> to allocate some more. We haven't seen the TV blitz that they want to do on us. 
They're planning to open this in 800 theaters around the country, 50 of them in New York State. That's not all in New York City. People are going to be brought into those theaters. There's no question about it. I don't think that we can counteract it by remaining silent. I think we have to enter the arena and go toe to toe with them. And I also don't think that we can stop the movie every place. But I do think that a unified community can stop it in one or two theaters in New York City. And that the, what that would do for us is give a message to, the, to filmmakers that you cannot profiteer from us. And very important, it will give a message to the theater owners that they should not show these kind of movies. That if you're in our community, you have social responsibility. You know, because where is everyone's social responsibility? How could they make movies like this? The impact on our children who will have to live with those stereotypes. I mean, we're, you know, most of us here are older. We're not going to have to go through the school system now, but I did, and I think most people here did, when Puerto Ricans were looked down upon and the teacher already had assumed that we were savages. And it's going on right now, and our, this kind of film will just add an extra thing. The theaters, if I could just say one thing, the theaters, the way the, way the film is done, Time Life produced it, 20th Century Fox is distributing it, and the theaters are showing. Now, of all of those places, they're all vulnerable in different ways. And they're vulnerable to public opinion in some ways. But the theaters are sitting right there in the streets, and they're the most vulnerable to direct protest. We had a picket at the Gemini Theater in five degree weather, and they were forced to take down all the ads for Port Apache. <coughs> five degree weather, we were there for two hours, they had police in front of the movie. And our position is that if they want to show a movie like this, which we feel will contribute to the problems that our community is facing, they should have to have police at every theater. Let them pay for the extra police. We think that the theater owners will eventually get the message that the community opposes, that there is community opposition to these kind of things, and they'll think twice. And we met with the theater owners, by the way. Before we started this whole process, we met with Time Life. United Brown's parents' office. We've met with the theater owners. At every step, we've asked people to act socially responsible. Our first demand was not that they stop filming. Our first demand, and there were people here that were at that meeting, our first demand was that they temporarily halt the filming and distribute copies of the screenplay to exactly the people who were here, to have the community's input into a film. Because it's wrong on any, on any <laughs> level, it's morally wrong if you want to deal with it that way, to come into a community and exploit poverty to get people to work as extras. Now you come into our community, 60% unemployment, to work as extras in a film that's going to degrade them and it's going to have a long effect on them. And at every step along the way, they've turned us back the most reasonable demands. And we told them, you can deal with whoever you want. You distribute the screenplay. We don't have to distribute it, but give people a chance to have some input. They said no. So now here we are. And as far as we've gotten is because we've pushed them. And I'm, I absolutely agree that they're going to try to use our protest against us. <clears throat> I'm sure that they will. They've tried it already. And they're going to try to divide our community. But they've been unsuccessful. They haven't found one Puerto Rican, or one black, or one concerned citizen who is not on their payroll to come out and say, this is a good movie. And that's very important that we hold together on that. So what I, what I think we should do is build on the unity that we have. You know, not everyone here is going to, is going to pick it. Some of us are going to pick it. Some people here got to write some statements. I think as a group, we definitely got to review this movie and give it that zero, give it the zero stars, and give it the X, because it's vulgar, and it vulgarizes our reality. And we got to put a stop to this kind of stuff someplace. So I think that's one thing that we can do. But I think on the other level, there's a lot of other things. I think we should deal with this question of time, life, getting this franchise, and hit them there. And there are people who can do that well. And as many, and I also think that the other way we make the statement is to go to the press that speaks to our community and tell the people, don't see the movie. Don't subsidize your own degradation. And don't get psyched into Paul Newman's eyes. <laughs> because they're putting him up front in the front of that movie. But what takes <coughs> all the whole context of the movie is not, is not Paul Newman's eyes, it's us. It's us as the animals and the Indians and the savages. And we got to tell the people that. And there are people here who command respect within our community. And when people here say, don't see the movie, we saw it. Don't see it. It's garbage. 
it degrades us, take a stand against it, that a lot of people will listen. And that message is also another way of hitting them in the pocketbook, as well as hitting time life when they come for this franchise. And the other thing is, <coughs> my feeling is that we should take it to the streets. That that's the other place that we should do it. <coughs> we did it in the Bronx, and one of the most important things in terms of moving this thing forward is that the people who came forward in the Bronx represented a broad cross-section. Because obviously from the beginning, they try to label this as isolated militant fringe group. But were the concerns real or not? You saw the movie, you know what it's about. The same thing that we've been talking about from the beginning. We saw the filming. We saw them filming, taking prostitutes, I mean, uh, actresses dressed up as prostitutes, and putting them on 162nd Street in front of the United Brown's parents. We saw them doing that. And we stopped them. We stopped them right there. If no one else wants to fight, we'll fight. And I'm sure that I could get all the women in the Bronx to go out there and fight. <laughs> we have never taken anything lying down. If nothing else that we can do, we can help this anger and this agony that we're going through. I, I guess I'm always the one who gets picked for something because someone wanted to be very nice to me very nice to me so he said you know there are jobs and i'm going to uh, all the jobs are for united bronx parents and you're going to lend us the daycare so that uh, paul newman can rest my staff went ecstatic paul newman you know so i said okay bring me a copy of the script and when i read that i was sick and i began calling people a lot in three days, they brought me another set of scripts because we were so, they knew that we were angry. I mean, because I said, I cannot give you the daycare, forget it, you'll never get in there. Uh, and they wanted to know why, they couldn't understand. I said, well, if you cannot understand, then don't do the film. So they brought me another revised one. And another. I think we have six of them. And I began sending them around, look at it, look at it. And people began getting angrier and angrier. And that's when Tom Fiorello, by the way, he stunk in that picture. And what bothers me is that perfectly, you know, that they use certain tactics. Tom Friorello came to tell me that he liked rice and beans. More than he likes spaghetti. And that, I tell you, it blew my head. That how could I say anything about him when he liked rice and beans? <laughs> what I'm trying to say, and he was a terrible actor there. You know, when we accept these things and we take it quietly, we will all die of, heart, of a, heart, a heart attack or something because our blood pressure goes up and we become so, so inefficient. To us, it was so, when, when the children in the high schools were, were actually bought to go down, when we took them to court to stop the film, and they, uh, they went into one of our good high schools, Alfred Smith, and got children. They offered to pay them to go and say that they were in favor of, uh, of uh, Port Apache using our little ones. And, and I called the principal and said, Mrs. Santanelli, I cannot stop the children because they're, 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 they're canvassing them outside and they're taking them all down to court. When our children got there and our people were there and our lawyers and everything were there, that they began to explain to the children what was happening and the children got very angry and they came on our side and they started running after the guy who was going to pay them off. <laughs> And if you remember, it came out on television, it yes. came out all over. And the film, the film that they're so upset about, the pictures that came out, that Paul Newman was upset was taken by my grandson. Yes, he took the picture for the Post. The Post bought the picture of him. And if I'll fight him with everyone I have. And if I have nobody else, the women in the Bronx have always been up front and we're going to. Who's going to do what? What kind of statements are going to be made? What exactly are we going to do in the next two weeks? Because the film is scheduled to open February the 6th. So it gives us just a little over two weeks Question. to put out our position. When you say open. And that people who have been in, people who do go to see it come and demand their money back, we think that the theater owners will get the message already. The Gemini Theater has canceled it. Well, that was our first victory of the day. And the movie has been pulled out of Philadelphia entirely. Oh. 